Hi there, welcome back to my channel. I'm so happy to see you here. Whether you're someone who wants to get started with watercolor painting as your new hobby, but you don't know where to start, or you have painted with watercolors in the past, but you have a hard time getting back into your hobby, you probably know that taking the time for self-care and recharging is so important, especially nowadays where the world is just so crazy, right? But if you keep putting it off until you have more time, you will find yourself in the cycle of always putting everything and everyone first until you feel burned out and unhappy. And because I don't want you to develop the habit of putting yourself last, I want to help you jumpstart your creative hobby in a few simple steps. Last year, I wrote my first watercolor book that is now available for purchase worldwide, a guide to watercolor painting with confidence. In this book, you not only learn how to choose the right supplies, how to mix colors, what techniques you'll need, but also get to practice all the techniques step by step. And in today's video, I wanted to share one of my favorite watercolor painting ideas from the book and give you some additional ideas on using this technique for even more paintings. One of my favorite watercolor techniques is the negative painting technique, which is not a negative thing, it's actually a positive thing because with this technique, you can create so many beautiful things very easily. And this technique is all about painting around an object with a darker color to make it stand out. So instead of painting, for example, this feather one by one, you paint around. So, so you actually make this shape more visible. So instead of painting the positive object, the positive space, you paint inside the negative space, so around an object. And I've done this on this channel a while ago when we painted the leaves and it's a very fun technique, but you can also use it for so many different things as I said, especially when you just want to relax and have fun and paint multiple things. And in this video, I wanted to share some ideas, three ideas next to these that you can find in the book. Also, if you don't want to draw these outlines yourself, you can find a companion guide that is linked inside the book. There's a link inside the book that you can go to and then get access to a companion guide with more resources and things that were removed from this book and additional things. So you can find also the outlines for this and some other projects where you might need to uh, draw something, but you can just print it out and erase it if you want. Without further ado, let's move on to the painting tutorial. So we will be using this technique that you can also find in the book. For the first idea, we are going to create simple but beautiful clouds but we also want to make it super fun by adding a moon so it's not just clouds we also have some moon inside here as well so here for example i will add the moon somewhere i think i will add it i like to paint things following the rule of thirds so i will always divide my space into nine equal parts horizontally and vertically and then i place something that i want to be in focus like the attention of my painting somewhere where those lines meet so in the cross road basically for this i think i will just let's see where can i put it so it's you can just use a washi tape to outline some of the shape and then maybe here so it's actually more proportional and not so crooked but again it doesn't really matter don't, don't worry about it too much it's it's all about having fun so this will be the moon and then i i think i want to add the clouds somewhere here so like so so they go up a little bit you can add them somewhere here maybe even make them bigger here and then one is here when one goes here I, I don't like it when it's too symmetrical or too um like too even i like to have some variation into some movement so i think i will just add it like that mm. i think that for for the purpose of this demonstration i think oh it's all good also one thing if you don't want your um, if you don't want the pencil lines to be visible erase a little bit 
of the pencil line because if you paint over it, especially when you use just a light wash of paint, the pencil line will look through. Always want to remove some of the pencil line before you apply the paint because afterwards, if you apply the paint and let it dry, you can't really remove the pencil line anymore. So do this always before. It doesn't even have to be like a lot, just a little bit. With a, a knitable eraser, it's very easy to do, but you don't necessarily have to use it. Just use a very soft eraser that isn't damaging to your paper. For the next painting, I also wanted to show you something that you can use for when you paint trees or something like that. And I know painting trees can be tricky. So for this, we will just we will focus on simple shapes. So Again, it looks more like a cloud, but we will just work with that. Maybe here's another tree, different type of tree. And here we'll have a um, pine tree or something like that. So in this book, I use this technique to create this, these feathers, but I also wanted to show you how to create these leaves. It's pretty much the same technique. You can even just move it around and you can see that you can use this technique in so many ways no matter how you look at it and I wanted to show you how to create this so basically all you need to do is create outlines that are more like an oval shape so here I added them somewhere here and then you want to create another row of the same shape slightly below and I start at this center point somewhere but again you don't have to like follow it exactly like I did this book is all, all about giving you an idea and some techniques. You can make your own rules. Just wanted to give you some ideas to play around with. It's all about having fun and playing around. So you don't have to create something exactly like I do. One is goes here. Then again, somewhere in the center of the previous layer. Then here again. It's a little bit more round. Mm, here again. Here and here. So pretty much the same as the feathers. You can see just the feathers are a little bit more pointy. This is more round, but again, you can make them however you like. And before we start, let's remove some of the pencil line again so they're not as visible later. And now you're ready to paint. All right, so for this tutorial, I'll be using my White Knight St. Petersburg set, a small um, starter set. And again, you don't necessarily have to have exactly the same colors. It just needs to be a little similar. In my book, I talk about why exactly it's, ne it's necessary to have different yellows, reds, blues, and everything like that, and how to use the other ones. And I feel like a set of 12 colors is all you need to get started because you can make so many different colors from that. So what we're gonna do is I want this moon to be yellow. So for that, I always, I'll start with just a little bit of yellow. So this is you can see my lemon yellow turned into green because my brush is a little bit blue, so blue. This is why it's important to have clean brushes, clean everything when you paint. But I also want to add a little bit of this more warm yellow because I don't want the yellow to be so neon-like. So this is kind of like a lemon yellow. It's very, very bright. Maybe I should have even started with just this warm yellow. Also one tip before you start, add a little bit of water to your, like you, you can even use a spray bottle or something like that because before you want to start, you want to reactivate your paints. It will be easier to get all these pigments before you start painting. So I'll be using this color and I'm just gonna apply it around the moon here like so and then i will just blend it out like so because i don't want any harsh edges so i'm just blending it out with clean water like so maybe add a little bit more pigment to the moon because it's very because remember when when your watercolors dry they always look more pale than when you apply them so you kind of want to balance this out all right maybe i can even remove some if i can remove some of the yellow here because so you will add some blue colors around and I don't want it to be like super green afterwards. That's okay. 
it's about getting back into painting, having fun, not stressing about anything. So this is the first step and then we can let it dry. In the meantime, you can work on this painting. So here I thought it would be fun to paint a tree and different types of trees and work our way up. So for that, I will just use the same color here, which is a little bit too greenish, but it's okay. I will add a little bit of yellow ochre just to make it a little bit more natural. So more earthy, just a little bit. So I can see it's already like more earthy and I will apply it somewhere here, a little bit more water, just like a cloud, just very, very loose, very random. And I will add a little bit of more of this bright yellow just to have some variation between different yellows. Like so. And then I will add a little bit of this brown also to my mixture. Somewhere, let's say here, just to make it very loose and fun. And again, I'm just applying a little bit of the paint. Just let it melt together without worrying about exactly what I'm doing. Just want to have some fun in adding these random colors here. Add it somewhere here. Because why not? I know it looks a little, little weird and you're like, okay, what is she doing? Am I in the right place? But let's stick with me. I'll show you what I want to do with this. And here we can add the sky. So for that, I'll be using uh, this mixture of ultramarine. So I'm just adding a nice wash of this blue color for the sky. And again, don't worry about mixing them too much together. I just want this to be like a, just a loose transition between those colors because we're not done it's just the background the first wash okay so don't worry about it too much and for this i also just use green and blue this is, so i'm using cerulean blue and lemon yellow in the book but you can use any other color as well just you want to make sure that when you use the colors here when you layer them you want to use colors that are close to each other so yellow and blue they create a nice green so you don't want to use for example um like a yellow and let's say purple or something like that because I mean you can't play around it's it's just like you will get different results if you want to have really vibrant colors in the end uh, stick to colors that create more vibrant uh, results so for example here I'll start with a mixture of my lemon yellow so and my cool blue it looks like a Prussian blue or something and I will mix them here together. You can see it's a very nice blue color and green together. Mix a little bit here as well. But again, remember that the colors that dry very light. So you always want to compensate with more pigment than you think you need. So here a little bit more of more yellow. It's a mixture between yellow and blue. And you can see the pencil lines are all almost not visible anymore, but let's let it dry first. Like so. so this is the first layer, okay? And then we just need to let it dry. So I usually just use a hair dryer and carefully hair dry everything. And then I'll go back and add another layer. All right, so once everything is dry, you can go back to the first painting. So you can see everything is dry here and creates a nice soft gradient. So here, for example, I wanted to make it also a fun cloud. Like it doesn't have to be like realistic or anything. Here it's all about just layering, mixing colors, having fun. So here we can start with the background. So this will be, for example, the very, very dark background, far away in space. So here, for example, we can use purple. So I'm just using ultramarine with this pink color. So it's kind of like a lizard a lizard and crimson, quinacridone, um, anything that is or magenta even that is more like a vibrant pink color. So you can see this is a more orangey red, tomato red. So I'm mixing this together to create purple. Very very creamy consistency. So I'm just adding this to the background.
very creamy consistency. And again, if you want, you can just simply blend it out with a clean brush. So I'm just using clean brush and carefully blend this out by placing my brush next to the wet paint. And then I'm just outlining the cloud that I've added here earlier. Again, you can blend this out here. So it's kind of like a transition between um, the sky to the moon and the clouds. And you can see I have a little bit of this cauliflower effect here because the wetness is different. So it means if, if you have more water next to a place with this little dryer, the wet paint will push like push away the less dry paint. So you can create these cauliflower effects, which I actually like here. You can even do one little trick. I will just remove this around because it's a little bit too much of this paint around. I'll add here a little bit. So it's kind of like glowy and textured. Okay. You can add a little bit of sprinkly water like that sprinkling some water clean water and here you want to make sure that the paint is not too wet otherwise it will disappear really quickly so just wait a little bit and then you can go back and sprinkle a little bit more of water but again it's still too wet here in the meantime you can start working on this bottom area here we can use maybe a bluish color again like a very light blue So this is all about just having fun with colors. You don't necessarily have to think how realistic it is and stuff like that. Just enjoy the process of mixing your colors, applying it to your paper and exploring all these techniques because you, if you just let go and have fun with those techniques, you will look for, you can look for clues this is how I do it. Whenever I paint something, I look for clues where whenever I use a technique and see it this spark joy. Because sometimes when you paint something and you're so stuck, like you're so focused on a reference image or something you would try to accomplish. And then you kind of like get so frustrated because you're just so focused and so stuck in this mindset of recreating something that you forget to have fun. But if you just focus on different techniques, and see what you can do with them. You see that your body reacts, reacts so differently to it. It will have so much more fun creating uh, what you create. And you will discover so many different things where you're like, wow, this is such a cool technique. Let me try this and uh, this technique in some other places. And maybe I can do this to this as well. Maybe what if I do that? And so you open so many more uh, possibilities when you do that. Paint joyfully create joyfully and look for clues when your body is like, yeah, this is so exciting. I love it. Again, a little bit more. I can even add some here. So we can see a little bit of sparkles here. All right, so while this is drying, we can add a little bit more paint here. I think this is not dark enough because it will dry. Just applying very loosely. And you can see this is also, this water pushes away the pigment and creates these beautiful effects. This is one of them, I, I don't know how people can't love watercolors. It's just such a fun uh, medium. It's just, you can experiment and have so much fun with it. And then you can see how the watercolor just creates its own thing without you doing anything. So this is going to be our tree. So what we're gonna do now is, now we have the base for our tree. Now we can go back and apply negative painting technique to shape our tree. So in this example, we will keep this color and then we shape the outside. So again, the negative painting technique is all about painting around the object using the negative space instead of the positive space. We have these mixtures, you can all reuse that. So I will be using green a little bit and add it to my brown here. So it's a little bit of a more natural green color. And then I'll start shaping my 
tree by outlining these swirly lines that I have here. So let me show you. So you go in and then you pretty much shape it by outlining your tree crown, for example, if it's like a crown, you will shape it around like so there's a little bit like different like movement in your tree. Maybe it's somewhere here. No, I, sh I shaped it somewhere here. Okay. Maybe there's one that goes like that. So this will be like the lower part of the tree. Mm, I think I will do it like that. So there's a little bit of this, this one tree, the top of one tree. So, so just like it, like someone bit of the crown here, kind of like that. And then I will just go in and color the rest here. Mm. But again, you can also play around with more pigments like yellow, because why not? And just mix it together. So you have variations between those greens. Like so. And I have some yellow still going on here. And again, let's sprinkle some water. Let's see how this, what we can create with this. A little bit of texture like that. Now here we can also re-add some color because it's still drying. And I think it's the perfect time to apply more sprinkles here that it's not super shiny anymore. Or you can also just add like salt or anything like that works as well. In the meantime, you can go back to this painting. And here what you want to do is you want to start with darker colors around the shape here and then blend out the rest. So because as I said earlier, the negative painting technique is all about painting around an object to really make your positive shape more visible. So in this case, our positive shape is this leaf or um, the feather and you want to paint around it so here i'll be using let's use this is what we use i think this bluish green color let's see if this is dark enough so i'm app uh, applying it right around the shape let's add a little bit more pigment and you also make sure want to make sure that um, when you apply the paint, it's it's not too dry. Otherwise, it's very difficult to blend it out like so. And then you can use the same brush or another brush, but a clean brush to blend this out. Okay, like that. So it becomes lighter and lighter around. Can you go around here again. And in here you can also do like use the same brush or another smaller brush or whatever works best for you. And for example, add a line here. Like so. So this will be the middle part. And then if, for example, you want to do this, like turn it into a leaf, you would just continue this line here. So you can even play around with different outlines, like shapes, uh, not shapes, but thicknesses of your uh, lines. Like so I think I'll just make it darker. So again, you have this darkness and you kind of want to recreate the same darkness um, when you apply these lines, otherwise it will look like why should it why is this area lighter than this place behind so okay so here for example this background so here i'm just adding this darkness here and i'll play around with for example edit like that so you don't connect with the middle line so there's lots of different options how you can play around with this technique and then you just let it dry all right, so now this is dry. You can go back and apply more paint and layer the paint over and over and make it darker and darker. So in this case, I used, oh, I used my blue color here, but 
you can just use again the blue mixed with a little bit of purple and just make it darker and darker so in this case i'll just use my blue paint again that they accidentally use for something else and then i will add a little bit of um and let's add a little bit of ultramarine as well and then i will add just a little bit of purple that i already have here because why not oh this was a little bit too much just move it to my next uh well here a little bit of blue a little bit of water because i want it to be more watery still so it's a watery consistency it's lighter than my creamy consistency so it will be um, not too covering immediately so what i will do i will start and outline my cloud that i outlined here so and just following the outline so this is i used the negative painting technique the negative painting technique to outline my clouds so instead of painting the clouds like that and filling them in i paint around them and this is such a cool technique i you just recently used it to paint flowers and things like that it's very very useful And again, you can blend it out if you want. Oops. Like so. I think I will again just blend it out. Because I actually really like this effect. So I'm just blending and soft softening these edges with a clean damp brush. Here also okay this is kind of dry also we can be like now if if you look at your paper and see that it's not shiny anymore this sweat area is not shiny anymore just a little bit more dull and looks more like matte you can sprinkle some water on top to create these effects again so just just a little bit of clean water and you have these little stars not stars, but like these particles, very fun. I, you must, <laughs> you probably noticed I'm a little obsessed with watercolors. Okay, now this is still move, moving. We can go back to this painting. And now we can focus on this tree here, for example. So this is going to be a pine, not pine tree. Oh, yeah, let's, see, let's say it's a pine tree. And I think I'll be using a different brush for this. So I'll be using my I will be using my silver black velvet. This is a size eight brush, and I used actually this brush for my entire book because it can hold a lot of water and has a very fine tip. So that's why I love this brush and my other like my Castaneda brush. But this is a more um, big, a bigger brush and that doesn't necessarily have to have a fine tip because it's pretty much like a mop mop brush and this has a fine tip. So that's why I'm gonna use this instead for now. So here, you, we are going to paint this tree here. And for that, I'll just use again my leftover paints that I have here. Mm, so I have this green here, but I also want to make it a little bit more natural. So I'm using a little bit of brown. Like so, so it needs also to be like a creamy consistency. It doesn't need to be, you don't want it to be super watery because otherwise it won't be too covering. Maybe. I think it's already not green enough let's add a little bit of green back so again we have a nice very beautiful green color and then you want to uh, load up your brush with paint and trees i know painting trees is a little tricky but the way i like to paint those is i start at the top so again make sure your tip is pointy by removing any excess moisture because if it's already too much you lose this fine tip and then i start with a line here so this is like the, the area the very top of my tree and then I leave a little bit of space and start adding all these little layers of trees so it's it's like a triangle going downwards with wavy lines pretty much so it's like a line and then you have all these wavy lines out that they that go that become wider and wider so this is what I'm gonna do here so I start with this line in the middle and then I start adding the trees 
uh, all these like all these leaves one by one by pressing down my brush so i start with this line and then i start adding the tree tree details by pressing down my brush and then going from left to right like in a zigzag motion and make it wider and wider so i start again a line this is the very top and I leave a little bit of space and then start dabbing it on so like that and then again you can also play, play around with how much pressure you put on your brush so you can either just use your your tip the tip of your brush and or just press down, down a little bit more so you have cover a little bit more of the area so here i'm just going like that i'm pressing it down and here you can see i i don't like this area here because there's just like this is like i like it to be like a, a more full tree so i'm covering these areas a little bit with paint and again i'm just going downwards and I'm just dabbing the paint on, dab, 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 dab. And again, here I meet my tree that I added here earlier. Again, we are using the, the negative painting technique. So what I do, instead of just, I don't know, randomly stop, again, I want to reshape my tree here on the bottom. So again, I use the paint that I have here and I start shaping the lower tree, again, the crown. So for example, like exactly like here, so I'm shaping my tree here so this is kind of like the tree is behind this row of trees here maybe here is another let me add a little bit of this paint gray what it is and i add another smaller tree here you can also hold your brush a little bit further away if you like to to stiff with your hand it also helps to hold the brush a little bit further away and then just play with it like loosely add it like so like further away it, it loosens your hand a little bit and you're not just like so stuck very closely to your brush and the paper and again you want to shape your tree around and maybe there's another small tree here again i have too much pigment and then here There's another tree in the background. So they be, they they hide behind uh, this area here. If you want, you can also make it like smaller. If you can also, what's fun is you can leave a little bit of these uh, lighter areas. For example, here. So it's kind of like a like a small small little detail looking through. Like so. so there's like a little bit of a green leaf like in the air or just like I don't know just if it's a little bit looser I feel like it looks so much better when and if you try so hard to make it super even and accurate so here for example maybe one is like so like that it's like in the wind like moving in the wind and the leaves are flying you can also add one that is here like a small one small tree Again, I'm just blending this out very loosely, dabbing the paint on, and then shaping this crown. And if you want, you can also, for example, here, if you feel like there's just too much, like there's a, the gap is too wide, you can always uh, add another row. Like for example, here, I can use just the same color they have here and start another row somewhere here because why not? I'm just adding another row of trees very loosely like so, so it kind of separates this to this and then if you want you can for example just blend this out upwards so it won't be that visible if, if the difference isn't that big but I think you can still see the different layers of the, of the trees all right so this is this is how you can um, play around with this and here you can also if you want you can add another but this is very optional let's add some I don't know, red to it this is like a like 
the um, autumn tree. This is already not negative painting to me. This is already painting the opposite direction. So this is like the positive painting technique. But I'm just adding some texture to this tree just because it looked like it's too looked too flat. And then you can let it dry and we can move on to this painting. So here again, you want to paint the same way. Start with a dark color. Even, even the, use the same um, mixtures. I need to mix new colors every time, just using a little bit more so I have more to work with. A little bit more blue. And again, you want to go ahead and outline all these outlines you just added. So, adding a little bit more water because if it's too dry immediately, it's kind of hard to blend out. So, and again, I'm using clean water and blend out the rest. So this is the dark area around this part. And then again, it can dry. Um, and if you want, you can add again those shapes. So here. And I feel like it works better when you have some texture. This, for example, this is a little bit light to yellowish to greenish. So I think I will just go over later and add another layer of paint. And then you let it dry and you continue the steps here. So this is so this is pretty much dry. So what I do is I go in with my purple color. You can even make it darker if it's not dark enough. And then go in and outline. What did I hear? I think this was my outline. Or make it, I think I will make the step a little bit smaller. Because here there was not enough not enough rows. So I'm just adding one here. Okay, so this is another row. And then again, I want to blend out the colors. And again, you don't, doesn't need to be like super, super even, like any even transitions or anything like that. You just want to have a dark color next to the lighter color. So it stands out. So there's like contrast between those. Maybe add a little bit more paint here. A little more pigment because I feel like it's not dark enough here. And then I can move towards our moon. A little blending. Because I don't want to have any harsh edges. So I'm always blending out all these edges here. So there's a little more water where the paint can spread out. And then this can dry. This is kind of already finished you can go back and like add it like go and play it around however you like but you can see the contrast is very visible when there's like light colors next to dark color like here for example you can see this contrast much better than this so maybe i can actually go in and add a little more darker color here add another layer to make it slightly dark on this side so you can see that now there's the contrast is much bigger now I just want to continue all these steps and make it darker and darker, layer by layer. So here, in this case, you make it darker and darker, and here you blend out the darkness. You can even, if you want, you can add a little bit of green, uh, yellow, because I feel like there's not enough of this play, because I, I like this. Play between green, blue, and yellow. Now I can continue with our color here. And I can add even more uh, pigment just to make it darker if necessary. So, and again, you blend it out with clean damp brush. Now 
Now because this is uh, rather dark here, you can use again the sprinkle technique with water and just sprinkle some water on top here. So now we can use again this cauliflower effect to add some sparkles, to add some texture and let it dry. So it's like, you can see this looks a little bit more fluffy and more fun than just flat, but you can play around with different techniques. Okay, last but not least, another last layer. I think that then it's enough. Maybe even a little bit more dark. Maybe now I will close this area. And again, I will blend this out. I mean, you can even make it even darker. Just add a little bit of paint gray here. I will add and soften this area a little bit. This is pretty much how it looks. Now you can still play around because I wasn't careful. Ooh, ooh. Don't panic. Just using my clean damp brush. And carefully remove. Nothing happened. Nothing to see here. But still what I want to do. This is one of the things I just recently discovered for myself. Is I want to add some gouache to it. Just grab a little bit make sure it's enough so it doesn't dry like transparent and then add to areas that I feel like needs a little bit of shine so for example here like here and you can also mix it with your watercolor so for example if you feel like that like I, I messed up like for example I messed some of the areas with my dirty fingers <laughs> can do you can for example cover it with by mixing your watercolors with gouache to make them opaque using the pigment and blend this out a little bit so here for example i use my my gouache my white gouache to add some to some areas and then i would just carefully blend some of the pigment outwards so here for example So I have a little bit of this shine and then that disappears gradually. You can add stars if you want any. Well, there's like in the, in the cloud, but you know what I mean, like here, for example. Very spacey. Mix them into some of the wet paint, that, if there's still wet paint. For example, just mixing this gouache to some of the areas here. I'll see. I think it looks cool. Cool. It make it soften, softens everything a little bit more. Okay, and we can go back and finish this one. And there you have it. Now you can see that this transition, as I said earlier, I don't like it that much because it's just like too flat. I like to have a little bit more, more um, texture. So what I will do is I'll apply a little bit of clean water on top of this area, very, very gently. And add a little bit of color on top. So let's see, maybe let's keep this area lighter. Now we'll just add a little bit of paint on top here. Just let it blend into this wet area. Like so, and this can blend together. Maybe even here, because again, this is too vibrant for my liking here. Just blend this together. Now all we need to do is re remove the tape. And 
these are how the paintings turn out. I used the same exact technique, just played around with a little bit of gouache and everything like that, but it's all negative painting technique and it's so much fun. I hope you will try it out. Here, for example, you can also turn around the paintings. Like here, for example, you can turn this into a painting where stars hanging down the sky or something like that. So this will be like um, different because because you can with the negative painting technique you can play around in so many different ways. So this will look good as well. It looks more. It also even looks like a stage. And these are the curtains. And this could also be like trees behind and anything that you want. So I really hope you'll play around with this technique and have a lot of fun. And again, if you need more ideas, check out my book, No Fill Watercolor. There are a lot of different techniques and also features some of my favorite clouds to paint, um, super fun. And the good thing is I show you everything step by step. And also whenever I paint wet into wet, you can see exactly how the paint looks. I took pictures of every stage, so it's not just scanned. I actually show you this, how the paint looks when it's wet. So I really hope you will enjoy it. I really hope you will have fun with these paintings. And there you have it. I really hope you like these ideas and find them helpful. Don't forget to grab your copy of the No Fail Watercolor book if you want to get started with watercolor painting or just need an additional way to improve and practice your watercolor painting skills. You can find a link in the description box down below. Thank you so much for watching, have a wonderful day and I will see you in my next video. Bye!